and we're recording for our podcast. I am here today with Audrey Heesh. You may remember me being a part of her, what was the name of that? The financial, get off the financial shame train experience in the beginning of 2023, which was super fun, where I got to share all about prosperity consciousness and the money saboteurs, which I was super grateful for. So as many of you know, I am leading a prosperity experience right now for the first three months of 2024. I do it every year. And so I thought it'd be really important to have somebody come on and just talk about who speaks the language of numbers, who can talk to what she has seen just in supporting other business professionals, self-employed business professionals, the blocks that they come up with, the importance of really knowing your numbers, being intentional with the money that you spend, knowing what's coming in and knowing what's coming out. We do this in my prosperity course because I talk a lot about how money is energy and energy loves clarity and what you put your energy and intention on is what expands. So it's it's important to know if we were, Audrey and I were talking, it's like if you ignore your children or you ignore working out or you ignore your diet, those things don't thrive. And so your money is the same way. So I'm really excited to have you on here today, Audrey. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do and who you support. Thanks, Jen. I am so excited to be here because this is a very important topic that really that a lot of people struggle with, especially as a small business owner, because our school system has not taught us financial literacy to set us up for success. And so I'm so grateful for this opportunity to spill the tea and really talk about what's important to gain that prosperity so that everyone can thrive in this world. And so what got you into this type of work? Why do you love this so much? I, funny story. So as a kid, do you know those, um, those lamps that have bases that you could have little drawers. <laughs> so I had, I had a lamp and I was, it was sixth or seventh grade. And I was like, okay, this top drawer is for any money I get that goes to my college fund, my first car savings. And my mom came in and was like, you're, you're budgeting. And I didn't even know what a budget was at that point. I've just always been very money conscious in a way that I've, I've never put words to until I got into my mid 20s. And then I was like, I'm just really good at this. And so it's just the flow of learning, especially like bookkeeping and the reports and understanding that and helping small business owners bring order to what they feel is chaos. Hmm. So I'm going to share a little bit about why I wanted to have you here to speak to everyone and for those of you that maybe are new to me or or maybe you're surprised at how long I've been around, I've been coaching women for at least 15 years as, as a certified coach. And so I've had my own, I've worked in in-person offices. I left that in 2013 and began coaching online in 2013. So this would be the 11th year I've been, I've been online coaching. And I was just sharing with Audrey, throughout the years, the early years of being a business owner, I really wasn't bringing in that much money. It was a little bit more of a hobby, probably like twenty five to maybe $35,000 a year for, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years. And that was when I was doing a lot of health and fitness coaching and uh, yoga teaching. And then I hired my first business coach in 2016. And then in 2017, the business coach was really where I started to shift my my mindset and that I'm not just doing this as a hobby anymore, but I want to be a business owner. I actually want to create an impact in what I do. So I know there's people here listening that are in the service of what they do, whether you're a lawyer or a therapist or a doctor, a health practitioner, a massage therapist, you're self-employed, you're doing what you want to do because you love it and because you want to be in service to other people. It's why I do what I do. And at the same time, it's also really important to be resourced. And so for a long time, because, and I know the reason why I did this, because when I grew up, we didn't really talk about money that much, but when we did, it seemed to be a big source of stress. 
So what I learned is I don't really want to talk about money. I don't really want to manage the money. As long as there's enough coming in, then everything's good. But then I realized year after year, well, I mean, I'm kind of managing it and I'm I'm really making like really not making that much money for the amount of time that I'm putting in time away from my kids and my family who at that time were pretty young. And then when I got my first business coach, I really shifted into coach from coach to business owner. And a huge part of that was taking ownership of my finances. Now, I will admit that after six or seven years of of taking ownership of my finances, I am still, there's such a steep learning curve in this because there's so many key components to it. Understanding, I think for a lot of business owners, what the right amount to invest back in the business in and what areas to invest in that are going to give you your biggest return on investment is one key component of that. Um, You know, last year I had an unexpected expense at the end of the year and it, and it wasn't that I owed the money to the IRS for taxes, but I had a tax accountant that had to do a little bit more work than I thought. And it was just this huge bill that I got at the end of the year. So again, I wasn't being intentional with really tracking the energy that was going in to uh, manage this transition in my finances. And because I wasn't paying attention to it, I got this surprise bill that that I didn't need to get, but I wasn't being intentional. And so the reason that I love this conversation is because all business owners out there, and I coach business owners, and I coach executives, and I coach a lot of self-employed people, whether they're practitioners, I coach the therapists and, uh, you know, health practitioners and also entrepreneurs. What happens is that they get burned out because they think it's worse than it is, or they have shame around bad decisions that they've made as most business, almost every business owner makes bad decisions. You don't really get to where you are without making mistakes or they start to build resentment because they realize they're overgiving. So tell me a little bit about who you specifically support as we dive into this conversation and how you help these business professionals shift their relationship to money. That was such a Beautiful story. You have such a beautiful way with words. Um, so I I help small business owners, generally professionals, really get empowered with their finances and take a look at what is what what is because numbers are what they are, and there is no we have so much emotion around money, and it it makes sense because it is what puts a roof over our head and food in our belly. And so there is a lot of emotions with it. And, but with your finances as a business owner, you can take steps to take that emotion out of it when you start looking at your reports and creating plans for when things do go awry. You have a plan in place. You know what your numbers are saying and what your next step, best next step is. And There's so much power in that because then that emotion is out of it because Mm -hmm. we've all, like you said, we've all made mistakes and it's generally in a situation of intense emotion and we're like, okay, I'm going to do this and without looking at our reports or our numbers and there, when you can see the trends that your reports and your money and your numbers are saying, then you can make proactive plans. Okay, every April, I dip in sales because maybe I take a break from launches or I take a break from clients. That's just my dip. I need to make sure that my high months can cover that dip or I need to pivot and do something in in April to make sure I'm covered for, for my break even so I'm paying my bills. And there is when you start taking that momentum and taking those steps, you're able to truly gain control of your business and run it like a business owner, like you're saying. Mm. And there is, that is so powerful. Mm. And I just love helping people with that. Generally, um, there are most business owners when they're starting out, 
they piece together their their receipts and their income at once a year to do taxes. And I go through and I I put that into book form. So it's called a book build. And so I take it from you're not putting it together once a year. You're putting it together like I put it together so that you have your reports. You get to have that information at your hands because your numbers are what your business's language there that's what it's trying to speak to you through is the numbers and there's so much I think it's beautiful my nerdy self I love my numbers I love reports but it is beautiful because there is that flow of the numbers yeah. and you just get to take it where it needs to go with your eyes wide open and it's okay mm -hmm. if you make an investment and you're like okay my numbers are saying I shouldn't do it but everything in like my core my root of my my being is like this is my next best step absolutely take that it's not meant to constrict you that's mm -hmm. the that's the thing that a lot of people feel I mm -hmm. think is that it's constricting and it's not it's empowering you get to have that decision already there and then you get to look at it from a place of okay is this really what I want even seeing my numbers and I think that's powerful okay lots of really good juicy stuff first of all I love how you started with money is emotional because it's true it's one of the top five hardest things to talk about um sex politics religion new health and and money as somebody who's coached women for 15 years I know those are the hardest things that I've witnessed that are there is to talk about so of course I created this prosperity journal to help people really peel back their relationship to money in many different ways and all the way from your money origin story to your money blocks to your sabotaging behaviors and beliefs and your, I love what you said that numbers are a language in which the way that your business speaks to you. I, I agree with that. I, I, I am, for those of you that don't know, I'm a former engineer. I'm a total math nerd. Like I love math. I love the language of math. I love numbers. Numbers do have an energy. They do have a frequency. Everything I do whether you know it or not, for those of you listening, every price that I charge, every time I send out an email, every time I do thing is all related to, has some sort of numerical meaning because, and I, and my birthday is 9977. I was born at 1122. Like I really, really love numbers in so many ways. And when you say numbers are the language in the way that your business speaks to you, it's so true and it's so powerful. And what I wanted to say is I didn't become a six-figure business owner until I shifted my mindset into becoming a business owner, which a year later than I created this prosperity course, I didn't, I became a six-figure business owner and then I lost six figures because I made a, a, a bad decision. I talk about one of the, the second biggest money block that I see in women. The first one is hard work equals success. The second one is shame around debt and scarcity. And I almost totally walked away from my coaching business. And then I realized when we go through hard things, that's that gave me the gift of creating this prosperity course because until I had danced with scarcity, I didn't really know what other people were experiencing. Because I was avoiding money, I really wasn't paying attention to it. I always felt taken care of. I didn't really actually know what it was like to be in scarcity until I went through this experience where I pretty much lost everything I made for an entire year and coached for a whole year for free. Because all the money I made was just being just really turned into a waste of time and money because of a, a bad business partnership relationship I was in that didn't work out. And so what I when I talk about prosperity, I want to tie these two together. Prosperity is a little bit of a softer energy of embodied trust. However, bless you, when you have the numbers there you it's it doesn't have to be from a place of scarcity a lot of times people think that quote budgeting is like budgeting means I only have this available to spend so here's the shift I want to invite people to think because in prosperity I really want to tie the work that you're doing into prosperity and, and the importance of 
having this intentional sort of uh, structure blended with this fem kind of the, like softer feminine approach to trusting is that I will always tell people instead of saying, I don't have the money to do this. And if you're looking really deeply, too deeply into the numbers, there's such a balance that's important here. I want to invite people to think what this is what I need to get to where I want. So you have the number, you have a goal. Now that you have the number and a goal, you know what you need to get from here to there. This is where it becomes empowered. It's not where you say, I don't have the money to do that. It's where you say, this is what I have. This is what I need to get here. Now, what am I going to go and create in order to get there? And that's an empowered way of looking at that versus a person who's budgeting through scarcity and saying, well, I only have this available for that. I don't, I don't have the money for this. I don't have the time for this. I don't have the energy for this. Very disempowering language. The wonderful thing about what you're teaching is you have the data to make empowered choices. You have the data, the raw data to make decisions. And what we put our energy and intention on is what grows and expands in our life. So when we put our energy and intention on the money in our business, that grows and expands because you're nurturing that relationship just like you are with your kids and your body and your health. It's not any different. You're nurturing it. Literally, money knows you appreciate it. I talk about the five money love languages in my prosperity course. When you nurture it and appreciate it, well, it's probably going to want to come to you more because you appreciate it and you know what you're going to do with it. The more clear and intentional you are with what you're going to do when it comes to you, then the more it wants to come to you so that you have something to do. But if you run your business like I did for seven or eight years where you're just, oh, it's really great. I'm just getting a couple thousand every month. And like, um, I can pay my house cleaner. I can go on a girl's weekend. I can do that. But you're really not willing to take up space as a business owner, which I would say I know a lot of female business owners and a lot of them do it as a hobby for many, 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 many years. And you don't have to if you really want to take it to that next level. And the reason this is so wonderful is because you get to create more and be and serve at higher capacity for your clients. This is how I create retreats. Sometimes when I do a retreat, I'm required to put a $10,000 deposit down. I can do that because my business is resource enough to do that. And so these are reasons why you want to be able to do that so you can grow and expand your business. So when we're talking about the intangible, which is kind of the trust and also decision-making on, on where you're going and the choices that we make in our business with the tangible, with the numbers speaking to us, and we're talking about being super intentional with our choices, what do you see in the people that you've supported or the biggest reasons why they're not paying attention to their money? Because I bet there's somebody listening right now who's really, I think this is what we do. Like we just avoid it because it's too painful. What do you see are the biggest blocks or reasons why small business owners are not looking at their numbers? There are two main ones that I see, and the first one is money shame. Generally, there is, we have this idea of what it is without looking at it. We're like, okay, I think this is going to be negative thousand dollars when it's might be positive a thousand dollars because they're not looking at it and like really taking that those steps to analyze it and like you said, put that intention there that, that attention and grow it and make that prosperity. So there is that layer of, oh my gosh, I don't want to look at it because I'm afraid of what I'm going to see. And then the other side is the financial literacy. I don't know how to put it together. I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what my next step should even possibly be because I am so confused about how all of this works. Our tax code here in America is one of the most confusing, convoluted, back crazy things. And 
So it takes a lot of effort and energy and understanding. And it's okay if you don't know it all. You're not supposed to. You have you have accountants and tax professionals for that. But it is important to get the base financial literacy so that you can start looking at all of that and asking the more intentional, deliberate questions so that you can gain that power within your business and elevate yourself with your finances because taxes are a big thing. Like you said, there's that end of year bill that you were like, I didn't know they needed to work that much. Mm -hmm. And that is so common. And that's, there are ways, I guess that's another one is people don't want to, bookkeeping in particular is one of the first things to be put aside and the last thing to be outsourced, what I've noticed in most businesses. And Mm -hmm. so- and then it gets expensive. If you've, or I don't like to use the word expensive, but it can be a costly mistake to put it off and then to have to clean up the mess. Absolutely. That's speaking from experience. <laughs> and that is so, that's a lot of people's experiences. And that also compiles the money shame is to be like, I don't want to, I don't want to hand this over because it is, quote unquote, a mess for what they think is a mess. And it's that's what we're here for, though, is to help you get that all in order and set you up for success because there is, like we've just talked about, there's all this power and knowledge that your business is trying to communicate to you through. And you need to have it together in order to do that. So when you talk about financial literacy, what are the top three things that every small business owner should know or needs to know when we talk about financial literacy? Excellent question. So most, one of the first ones is knowing which metrics you need for your business and your goals. The first metric that I always say is your break-even point, how to find that out and what you need for that because that's how that's when you know what you need to bring in every month to cover your bills that is your break even point is so to, like your expenses that like i know what that is in my business every month and about every year before i invest extra like i would consider i mean i i always have like a business coach and i consider that extra but then i have assistance and I have all my expenses that it costs for me to run the business. And I know what that number is every, I know what that is every month. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That, and that is a huge step forward that really, really starts to change the game for a lot of small business owners when they start looking at it that way is when they're like, okay, what do I need to bring in in order to sustain my business? Exactly. Yeah. And then also pay yourself at the end because that that's a good point because that was the thing that I pushed off for a re- as I was running my business without ever paying myself and for for many years. So and that's a, a good point because there's the business expenses and I'm I'm thinking of like business owners who are starting off as kind of a hobby and they or it's their side hustle and they want to grow into it. There's how much money does it cost you to run your business every month? And then how much do you need to pay yourself so that you can pay your bills? Yeah. Absolutely. Because that is that is something, and I'm not even pretend that's something that I struggle with too. And I know these things is just yeah. paying myself. And so there are those things that trip us all up in one form or another. It's just being very intentional and aware of what is tripping you up so that you can then get the help. Yeah. And so after the break even point, what is something else that a small business owner? Knowing their reports, looking, understanding how to read your profit and loss and your balance sheet. Uh, If you want to get real fancy, the cash flow statement. (laughs) So I'm still learning these things. I know profit and loss, but the cash flow. Yeah, I'm and I think this is why we hire accountants, because some of it, it is intimidating. And I'm And speaking from experience, like I consider myself to be like really good at math, but that doesn't mean I understand taxes or business or, you know, it takes, it takes time and energy and, and the, and the desire to do that. But if you really want to be a successful business owner, and if you love what you do, 
to me, what I've learned throughout the years and to the women that I'm coaching, this is a non-negotiable. I see so many women for so many years. First of all, I see so many women having a hard time investing in themselves and getting the support they need. That will keep them where they are and they will not grow. The only way to grow is to continue expanding, in, in my opinion, what I've witnessed that works over the years to continue investing in whatever area of business you need at that year. Sometimes sometimes it's marketing, sometimes it's mindset, sometimes it's a tax account. Last year, the investment for me was in really, because I, my income increased so much, I had to get really clear on my, you know, my taxes. I had to get them just cleaned up. So that was last year. But then also just, um, if you really want to grow your business, you it's a non-negotiable to be intentional and to know. And then honestly, it gets kind of fun because you get to make choice. You get to make decisions. You'd be like, oh, awesome. I have like a bonus $10,000 this month. Now I write these goals out like I just did in my prosperity journal. When I get, and I'm one thing I've learned too, to be very specific about um, income and profit So (laughs) now I have these goals in 2024 and they're mixed with personal and business. I just did this last night. I'll I'll share a couple. When I get the first month that I have 10K in profit, so after expenses, then I'm investing in a new person for my website. And then when I get the 20K profit, whatever month that happens to be profit for that month, then I'll put it aside. I'm investing in this like $5,000 water filter that I've been waiting for. And then I'm going to save when I get 40K profit in 30K profit this year, I'm going to invest in publishing my next book. When I get 40K profit, this is super important because I used to just say 40K and not profit. Um, I'm going to start saving to buy an apartment in Italy for my daughter where she's going to school. So I have reasons with what I want to do. And it's really important to break into uh, managing your profit and losses because the, because I, for such a long time, I made a business decisions based on my income, not even my income based on the revenue that was coming in, but not the income I was paying myself. And so I was making bigger investments then my business was really ready for. I was making big investments based on the money that was coming in without thinking about the expenses that were going out. And I I did that for a couple of years. So so knowing your reports, your profit and loss, your balance sheet and your your cash flow. So to somebody who's newly running a business or trying to learn more, how and where can they go to learn more about this, about, about their sheets? other than their accountant, if they don't ask their accountant, where else could they go? So first I want to hit on a couple of your brilliant points that you just talked about. Okay. One is that accounting isn't math. Like people get really afraid of their bookkeeping because they think it's just math and it it's, it's adding and subtracting. Beyond that, it's not heavily heavy in that aspect. And so I think knowing that helps people get more involved in it because it's not the crazy, I love math, you love math, we're math people, <laughs> but that there's a, a large section of our society that is not math people. And so when you pull that out, it helps them get more into it. Um, and your profit is not your income. There's so many things that people are saying, like just your income, like here's what are your income goals? And if your income goal is a hundred thousand, but you spent a hundred thousand, where does that leave you? Because you still need money. You, you worked all that year, like Mm -hmm. you said, and it's so important to have profit goals. So I love, love that you have those profit goals. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, I I started to notice and I I feel like I've been in this game for a long time, like the online coaching. But, you know, there was like this phrase like six years ago, be a six figure business owner. And then it was like seven figure business owner. And then it was eight figure business owner. And some of those people have been my clients. And I've I've even coached a client to seven figures. However, she was spending like 400,000 in Facebook ads. And then like, and oh, Yes. And I like, that is not my personal choice, 
But however, it's so you're really after all of your expenses, you're really making like $300,000 a year or like 30%. And it was, I, I was, this was happening in my own business. I think this happens with our clients. We tend to see our clients reflect some of the things that are happening to us. And that is what was happening in my business for many years until the past two years is that 70% of what was coming in was going back out. And I realize I want it to be the other way around. And so, but I feel like there's also a difference in whatever stage of growth you're in in your business. And what I've noticed is it takes a lot, what I have noticed in my experience and what I've coached other women through is that it takes a little bit more of an investment upfront up until about the first $65,000, in your business. Then once you get close to like the $100,000 mark, you probably stay between there and 150 for a couple of years. That level investment is a little bit different, but it starts to give back more because it's actually a higher number at the same percent. And so it starts to give back a little more. And I don't know what it is after that because I'm not there yet. But from the people that I've coached, I've seen that the profit starts to come in. It's kind of like an exponential curve. I don't know if you see this in the clients that you serve, but as you increase your capacity to receive, because you're intentional with your numbers, you know what's there, you know what's available. When you do that, you increase your capacity to receive, you know what is going out and where it's going. Then what I have witnessed is it seems exponential because the investment percentage is a higher number that more keeps coming in. So I'm excited to get to the next level. I'm not there yet. But um, so you said a couple of things, money or accounting is in math. So we can just remove that block for people that might not love math. What other um, were you, you were going to share something else? One more. Yes. Uh, you touched on it so beautifully is your cash on hand is not what your profit is or everything that's available to you. So you have your bank account and a lot of people just work off what's in that bank account without seeing with your reports show you that, okay, you have this bill coming up. You have you every year, you have this license renewal. That's five grand that you weren't anticipating because you were just looking at your cash on hand. Mm. And that is just a trap that a lot of people get into. And your reports help you not do that. Yeah. Yeah, they do. One of the things I love to do in my business is I plan cyclically. So I'm thinking I haven't ever actually, like I do a financial review from the previous year, which I've been doing this week. Again, it's not like a super fun thing to do. And I can see where it can be fun, but sometimes it's not because you're like, oh my gosh, like these months were really great. These months really weren't that great. But also knowing your uh, kind of, I think what I've noticed is everybody has their own cycles noticing when you're bringing in typically if you look back over the years I have months that patterns either it's my energy or what or where I'm at that bring in a lot more income and then I have slower months and I think knowing those patterns and being prepared for what expenses you know come up at every part of the year is super helpful too absolutely yeah. and that's when you see those patterns, you can be like, okay, April is my dip month. How can I make sure that I'm covered? Yeah. And that's, that saves you so much stress and unnecessary anxiety when you're in that month that has a dip and you're like, but what am I going to do? Or what should my next step be? You've already figured that out. Yeah. And so that's powerful. So break even point understand your reports. What's one more tool that every business owner needs to learn? I would say profit and loss, break even point, making goals. So like you said, like the profit goals, being very clear and intentional about, because once you get that break even point and you see your reports, you can then be like, okay, but I need this profit or this is what profit I'm wanting. Here are the steps that I can take to get there to then you're running your business. Then you're being a business owner and taking that mm -hmm. planning and that understanding and that 
um, that foresight to be able to be like, hey, this is what I have coming up in my year. Here's my year. This is what I have yeah. coming up. How can I plan this to make sure that I'm hitting my goals for not only my personal life, but also my business. And as business owners, we get very, it can be very confusing mixing the two. And it's very important that you, my husband just came home, is that um, <laughs> you, you keep your business and your personal separate. You do pay yourself, but you keep all of your finances separate, mm -hmm. very separate. Um, doing that will not only give you clarity, it'll give you understanding, and it'll keep you out of trouble with the IRS. And that's that's a big yeah. one. So <laughs> it's just another way that kind of circles back to saying what we've been saying all along, such as, um, you know, keeping how important the intention of of your finances is understanding it understanding what's coming in what's going out um the you're increasing your uh, capacity for financial literacy the more intentional you are then and the more clarity you have the more intentional you will be the more that capacity expands because what you mentioned earlier is that what people get because i asked you the question before this call what shifts for people when they're intentional? And you said confidence. And so, and that has been my experience in myself in this pro prosperity course. I mean, honestly, like this, this is, I'm not a money coach. This is mindset work. Like I, I understand people. So I understand what triggers people, what activates them. And every single time I launch this course, I mean, I don't know if it's been every single person but I, it feels like it has been almost every single woman in there increases their financial income in ways either they have the confidence to negotiate if their executives negotiate their salaries or raises. They just went in and asked for it. I had one lady literally received the cost for the course. The day she signed up, she got a bonus. She got a call from her boss. And then two weeks later, went in and asked for a 20% raise and she got it. And then I had another yes. client who just started like, when we open up our capacity to receive money or support, we open up our capacity to receive opportunities. I've seen women through the course welcome in opportunities for new job opportunities, new raises. If they're self-employed, they've welcomed in new clients. They've they've left their previous job to start working for themselves and they've increased their income to what it was when they were working with somebody or they just received a raise at work without even asking for it. And I, I don't think it's a miracle. I think it's, it's just an energy thing that when we really truly open up, when we're intentional, like I said, with our kids, with our health, with our food, when we pay attention to it, when we nurture that relationship, it grows. And so we, we, you've given us permission. I'm so grateful for this conversation. And I hope that it's given permission to everybody listening to not be fearful of the numbers, but to use them to empower you. So when you talk about the biggest block being shame, shame is very disempowering. It's a very, very heavy energy. If you've uh, studied David Hawkins and the law of consciousness and emotions, shame is the lowest vibration emotion energy that one can experience. So when you're in shame, you're going to attract that low vibration, even clients to work with. When you're in trust and joy, which is on the higher spectrum in, spectrum energetically, you're going to attract those kind of clients that are also a joy to work with, and they're also working on trust. So where we are tends to attract who we work with also. And that is why the clarity and the intention around the money is so important. Is there anything else that would be helpful for you to share with the people who are listening today around just maybe healing their relationship to money around gaining ownership of their finances around blocks that might come up or maybe even the tools that you recommend using actually i do want to ask you that question but is there anything else that's coming up that you'd like to share yes if avoiding your numbers is what what you've tended to do i 
strongly want you to look at your bank statements, your bank feed every single day. Just start with that. And it can be just as simple as that to start looking at it every single day. So then you can be more intentional, be like, oh, what was that charge? Why am I getting charged that? What is this random thing? And do that for both your personal and your business. And that way you can just start. And that is the best net first step. Um, after that, put your books together, have your books so that you can have your reports. And then you can start doing learning your reports. And then you can start learning what taxes that you can start doing for strategy so that your business is covered. And it's just that progression. You just, you don't have to do it all at once. That's not what I'm saying, but you can start just taking that baby step in mm -hmm. just going at it with your eyes wide open and just being intentional and looking at it. Just start by looking at it. So I love that you share that. Start small, start looking at the numbers, then start building your books, start understanding what's coming in, what's going out. And then once you have an understanding of that, then you're ready for some of the strategy. Because what I've noticed is a lot of uh, the type of women that I attract, very high performing women, they want to jump to the strategy and the results and they want somebody else to do kind of the messy work for them in the beginning and it's so much more empowering to be a part of the process because true prosperity consciousness is the choice and the ability to amplify your service your values and your voice in the world through the energy of money that you're receiving so you're resourced from that financial prosperity so you can go and put more out of what you're passionate about into the world. And if you're not willing to nurture that relationship with the financial piece of the business that's supporting you to support other people, then it's there's going to be a little bit of a gap in the energy of doing that. And I know from personal experience, I want to close with what are some tools that you love to use to help keep track of expenses? So it really depends on your place in your business and how intentional you want to get. I prefer QuickBooks. Um, I don't like them as an as a company, but they are the, the Goliath in the industry. And so they have the best tools, the best reports, the best and the most seamless easy to use system. Um, but there are people that have just a, an Excel spreadsheet. And I think that is a beautiful place to start. If you're just at like $20,000 a year, you don't need to invest that $85 a month for QuickBooks. Um, <laughs> you can, if that's what you want to put it towards, absolutely. I'm going to fully support that, but it's also not necessary. Um, there's so many ways and so many things out there that you can use. Um, there's a lot of, one of the popular ones is Profit First. Um, if you really like things segmented out, it tends to be a lot of back-end bookkeeping work because you have like six different bank accounts that you have to track and reconcile, but it really helps a lot of people if they're, they're segmented type of people in their brain it works really well for them. Um, just know that it is a little bit more tracking. And lastly, I'm on the IRS website all the time. They are a fantastic tool and they're getting better every day. They just, oh. So as business owners, I just got excited. Since the Inflation Reduction Act, they've been able to be funded and they're putting out more helpful information and tools for us. There's an online uh, online, um, online business account. I'm trying to remember what it's exactly called, but it's currently open to sole proprietors and I think partnerships. As it gets going though, they're gonna add all the different types of entities and you can have everything right there. It's You can see where you get 1099s. You can see the 1099s you give. Um, so it's a, is it like a resource library or is it like an account that keeps track of your personal sheets? 
I'm not fully sure yet because my entity isn't up. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I don't know fully what they're going to provide for it. But I do know that if you get like a letter from the IRS, you're able to respond to it through it. And they're just going to have a lot of really cool features that are going to help you instead of trying to sit on hold with the IRS for hours. Yeah. Been there more of the times than I'd like to admit. But <laughs> so it's just, it's a really cool new tool that's, and when I logged into mine, because I made my account for when it becomes live for me, and it links me to my individual one, and I didn't even mm. know that was there. So now I also have an individual uh, online account dashboard. So that oh, was awesome. Just, yeah, it's really cool. So what resources do you have to share with the listeners? Or what are the ways that they can get in touch with you, maybe get support? What would you like to share? Yes. So I, I can provide you with, um, I have a know your reports workshop that I would love to offer your audience. If yeah. you'd like that. Perfect. Uh, so I just go, it's just a quick little video to help you start learning and understanding your balance sheet and your profit and loss, because it's so important. And I know how much better it'll be for you. Um, Do you have a link for that that we can share? Yes, I will okay. have that link for you. I don't have it up at the moment, but I okay. will absolutely get that to you. Perfect. Um, yeah, and or I'm at Graceful Penny on Instagram. And that is me. Awesome. And I know you do an, an annual summit or you did one last year. You're doing one this year. So this might come out afterwards, but it's something where people can... Um, also come be a part of a lot of experts in the industry in very different ways. And it's, it's a great opportunity to just learn more about financial literacy, mindset, business expansion, bookkeeping. You've got all kinds of amazing guests lined up for that. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing your time and your knowledge with us and also your intention and motivation to hopefully all the business owners listening to let this be the year that they build confidence through clarity and intention so that they can do more good work in the world, which is the best part is when you get to do what you love and you feel resourced and supported in that, and then you get to do more of what you love and then it becomes fun and it doesn't it feels lighter and it doesn't feel so heavy anymore. So thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for sharing. And we'll certainly um, share the link to your workshop in the show notes. And is there any last little nugget of wisdom you'd like to share or you feel complete? <laughs> I feel like I want to give so much gratitude, Jen. I adore you. Aww. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and I love talking to you and I'm so excited. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Received. I am receiving that. And I'm. it's my pleasure to have you here today. So thank you. All right. Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining and we'll see you again next week. Okay, we end uh, we ended the